This is our 1951 Crosley microcar. It's got a propeller on the front. And this is the chassis out of a 1981 Chevy Love mini truck. What we're trying to do is figure out what needs to happen to this chassis to have it actually fit in the little micro car. So things like, how much do we need to shrink the chassis this way because we know it's too long? You know, where would the firewall hit on the engine? How would the engine fit in the engine bay? And videos started popping up in my feed about 3D scanners and how some people are starting to use them for their kind of hobby automotive work. So what we're gonna find out today is, is it worth doing this old method here, which has worked fine for many years, or is it time to go to something like this? All right, I've got the laptop booted up, I've got the scanner plugged in and powered on, and I've got the software loaded. So what we'll do, we'll scan the Love chassis first. If that works out okay, we'll scan the Crosley body second, and then we'll get them into Fusion 360, which is a free program that you can use, and we'll see how they fit together, see if it was worth doing this. Okay, so you can choose two different types of objects, small, medium, and large. This is obviously gonna be large. Okay, we're powered up. Oh, shit. Bang it into the dam. All right, now I've gotta be able to see the laptop while we're doing this, so. All right, we're gonna start the front here with the radiator. Press the play button, and it'll start previewing. So we got a preview going, but we're not scanning yet. Uh, uh, creepy. Okay, all right, we'll start with the radiator. All right, start scanning. Here we go. And then on the preview, it goes green when you have enough data. Oh, so green is good. Not enough features to align. So it'll yell at you if it can't see unique spots to help it align the scan. So every time it loses tracking, you can move back and it's smart enough to figure out kind of the last spot. I think this might be too bright. Let's turn the brightness down. Oh, that's a little better. Okay. Yeah, it said if you've got the LEDs too bright, it won't work that well. Oh yeah, that's working way better now. I lowered the brightness of the LEDs. Okay, let's try and get some of the engine. This is probably the most complicated spot to scan, the engine. All kinds of stuff going on here. It's picking it up pretty good so far though. Computer fans are going crazy. It's kind of maxing the CPU and the GPU out. Sounds like a little jet engine going on over there. So the scan just messed up on me a couple times when I was scanning the tire and then I went back to the suspension, it doubled everything up. So I had like two A-arms, two sway bars. And I think because the tread is the same way around the whole tire, it didn't quite know what part of the tire I was on. So I put this blue painter's tape kind of at random on the tread. And I think that gave it enough kind of unique spots to look at that it stopped messing up on the tires. The other thing I just learned is, you know, when it messes up a whole section, like in this area here, you can just pause the scan, delete all of this out, and then find a spot where you've already scanned, unpause it, it'll pick it back up, and then you can just keep going. So that's pretty cool. I've given up on confrontation. I've given up on every politician too. All right, we've got the little Crosley in here now. Before we scan it, we're gonna have to make the reflective surfaces kind of dull so that the scanner actually picks them up. So to make things not shiny, all you need is some isopropyl alcohol and baby powder, mix it together, spray it on, and then it'll make like a chalky, non-reflective surface that the scanner picks up. So this is one way to make a car look uh, less valuable than it is. Just spray the thing in baby powder and it looks way worse than it did. All right, here we go. All right, it's getting a little tail light. Good sign. 
bumper. Ooh, it's scanning this pretty fast, actually. Nice. It's actually scanning that a lot better than the, the chassis so far. It's kind of like painting. That's crazy. It's accurate enough that it's picking up the stickers. So you can see the height difference in the stickers back here versus the paint. The scanner keeps getting lost on these bigger body panels that don't really have any features on them. And so it comes with these little tracking dots that you're supposed to be able to stick in random places. And that's supposed to give it enough unique features that the scanner won't get lost anymore. So we'll try these out, see if that helps. All right, I'm done scanning the Crosley. The shop has this weird smell. It's a combination of motor oil and baby powder. It's kind of weird. So these tracking dots that we put all over the thing, they seem to help some, but it's still messed up on the passenger door here. So I have no idea what's going on with this area, but I'm gonna leave it alone. It's good enough for our first scan of the car. All right, so let's get our two models into Fusion 360 here and see what it looks like. And they're not quite lined up right, so we can spin that around. That looks about right. Okay, we'll bring it forward. Nice! <laughs> oh, that's funny looking. Yeah, right now the engine would be sticking out of the hood. So let's get this thing a little higher in the air. Maybe something like that. Right there, the radiator's starting to poke out. So let's try, let's try that. So if we look at it from the side, let's turn the body off. We can see where the engine sits and with the body on. Yeah, that looks pretty good. This is kind of handy since I didn't do a very good scan of the body and there's a giant hole in it. It's pretty easy to just see right in the car and we can see kind of where things would line up. So yeah, right here's the original firewall and you can see the engine's poking through the firewall. So I knew I was gonna have to redo some of the firewall. That shouldn't be too bad. Now that we've got the chassis in Fusion 360, real quick, I just picked two places between the back frame rails and took a measurement and it's coming up with 35.636 inches. So I've got the laser here and we're gonna double check what we're getting in the real world. 35 five and five eighths. So 11 thousandths of an inch. To put that in perspective, I've got a piece of notebook paper here. I'm gonna fold it in half four times and measure it. 13 thousandths of an inch. So the error on that measurement from the 3D scanner back here is the thickness of four sheets of notebook paper. So that's accurate enough for the kind of work that we do. So how does the scanner compare now to the old tape measure? So for simple stuff like measuring the wheelbase of this chassis and then the wheelbase of the Crosley, it's probably quicker to just get the measuring tape out. And real quick, I can see that we need to pull 21 inches out of this chassis. But for everything else, like let's say for example, we wanna see where this carburetor is gonna hit under the hood. You gotta come in here and measure how high the carburetor is from the floor. And then we've gotta subtract six inches because the chassis is in the air. And then we've got to measure how far the carburetor is from the front of the frame. And then we've got to measure how far inboard it is from the tire. And then I can crawl under there and maybe measure from inboard of the tire. And by the time I do all that, it takes three seconds to just magically go into the hood, just 
and look around from inside the engine bay and just do a quick measurement. The main thing I think this will be good for is being able to mock things up in the house while hanging out with your family instead of being out here in the shop measuring things. Like if you wanna design a roll cage for this car, you can come in here, draw it all up, and spend a few hours in the house on the laptop, at least hanging out with your family, instead of sitting out here laying on the floor with a tape measure. I think this will be good for the weekend warriors that may only get like an hour of free time to themselves at night. You can get the laptop out, from anywhere in the world and kind of work on your car. So measure for a fuel system, electrical system, see how much exhaust tubing you would need. Now that I know which part of the frame we want to take out of here to make it fit in the Crosley, I've got to put the laptop down, actually get to work on this thing. So subscribe if you want to keep up with the little Crosley project. We appreciate y'all watching as always. See y'all next time.